Good afternoon and welcome to Day by Day with Rob and Jody. I'm Rob. And I'm Jody. We're excited to welcome you here today on Hope Radio 24-7. I want to say good afternoon to my beautiful wife, Jody, over there. Hey there. How are you, honey? I'm wonderful. How about you? Great. And before we get too far into it, we want to say hello to our Facebook viewers hey out guys. there. Hey, guys. Happy, happy day. Welcome. We love having you on here with us. Uh, and uh, today is uh, October 23rd, 2017. And... Uh, and it's a whopping 103 degrees outside here in Corona, California. Yeah, it's 103 degrees in Corona, California. Ah, uh, yes. A week before Halloween. Can you believe it? Well, there could be some spiritual implications that go with that thought Woo-hoo! of why it's so hot. It is hot in... That is not the context of anyway, our show. Anyway, that's true. <laughs> We're trying to keep you folks out of there. That's right, but... Uh, Anyhow, we do want to thank uh, Hope Radio and uh, Hope Recovery Center for helping us to bring you uh, hope in Jesus Christ day by day. And uh, we do that here each Monday at 5 o'clock uh, with our live show here and then uh, a replay several times throughout the week. And, uh, of course, you can catch our, our um, uh, podcast and, and download our show at hoperadio247.com. So we encourage you to check that out uh, as well as all the other great shows here on Hope Radio. You know, it's as you said, it's a hundred and uh, something unbelievable temperature outside. And, uh, you know, about a month ago on this Monday, we were dealing with the Canyon Fire number one, which we canceled our show on. Correct. And uh, two week, because it was so close to our home. Right. Two weeks later, we had Canyon Fire number two. Right. Uh, that uh, we had family members that were, were uh, had to evacuate. Evacuate. For. And uh, now, here we are two weeks later, and we don't have canyon fire number three, but we have uh, hot spots flaring up because of the winds and the, and the uh, high temperatures today. The Santa Ana winds. And, you know uh, what they call those devil winds, I right? Gotta, I got to tell you, the, the, the sound of helicopters is getting to be real familiar around our house. Yeah, so no kidding. I almost don't pay attention to it anymore because they're, it's, it's just, just a normal occurrence. Mm-hmm. And uh, mm-hmm. that's a bad thing that I don't pay attention to it, but... Uh, uh, it does get my attention, though, when I'm driving down the freeway and it looks like there's a helicopter about to land on the freeway. Then it gets my attention. But, That's right. Uh, so anyhow, uh, as always, our uh, our prayers go out to the first first responders and, and uh, anybody that's out there helping to keep us safe on days mm-hmm. like this. Let's pray for them as, as we usually open our show with a word of prayer. Father God, we just thank you uh, for this opportunity to be on Hope Radio today, to, to be your mouthpiece to the people that need to hear something today, Lord. Let their hearts be... Uh, receptive let their ears be open let the words that you want spoken be sent forth today lord that we might impact someone's life lord we ask that you be with any first responders out there today and uh, any people who are in areas where uh, there are potential uh, possibilities of fires lord just uh, eliminate those possibilities lord get the, the people out there that are checking for them let them find them and get them put out before they become any kind of a problem so we thankful for those who uh, defend our our uh, homes, for those who defend our freedoms, Lord. The military is coming strong to heart right now, Lord. We just thank you for our military, for uh, the protections that they give us here at home and around the world, giving us the opportunity to live in this this wonderful and free country that we call the United States of America. Mm-hmm. Lord, we just thank you for our many blessings, Lord. We praise you and love you. In Jesus' name, amen. Amen. Hey, honey, you know what? What? We've got something new we're going to do. We are. We are. We are? We are. We are. Oh my goodness! Are we? We are. Oh, we are. Holy cow! Okay. Wow. Now don't don't get the cows involved in this. Well, now you listen. Okay. What are we going to do now? We're going to take callers. We're going to take callers on our show today. We're going to do that a, a little later in the show. After the break. After the break, we'll take callers. So uh, if you got uh, something you want to call in and ask us or comment on, we'd love to hear from you. Um, the phone number is seven one two eight three two eight two nine four. And you punch in an access code of 205492. Uh, we will give you that number again in a little bit. Again, we're going to... And I posted it on the Facebook page. And it's pasted on the pasted on the Facebook Live. So mm-hmm. uh, we're going to repeat that again later and uh, give you the opportunity after the break for calling. And that's only during the live show. So if you listen to this on a replay, you'll have to call back on a live show. There you go. There Just you go. saying. Yes. All right. Well, as always, we invite you to uh, send us comments. And uh, Mm -hmm. if you'd like uh, notes from our shows, you can ask for that as well. Uh, You can leave comments for us and ask us questions at our website at www.tcb4jc.org. That's tcb4jc.org. 
or on you can find us on Facebook at Day by Day with Rob and Jody, and that's Rob with two B's and Jody with a Y. Mm-hmm. So, all right. Well, you know, the the last couple of weeks we kind of been talking about uh, a pretty important subject. We've been talking about the Great Commission. Uh, two weeks ago, we had a, a full show on the Great Commission, and um, we we talked about what the Bible had to say about it, what it, what it means to have the Great Commission, and and uh, what that uh, what it really what it, the Great Commission is. Mm-hmm. Uh, you go forth into all the world and preach the gospel. Um, so we, we we talked about that. Then last week, we had some guests in the studio uh, from the Chariots they live of Light. It. What's that? I said they live it. They live it, yeah. From the Chariots of Light Motorcycle Ministry in uh, Montebello, California, uh, we had Pastor Carlos and Junior Martinez with us. A um, couple members from, uh, well, Pastor Carlos pastors Dunamis Power Ministries in Montebello. Mm-hmm. And uh, Junior is the area leader for uh, Chariots of Light Motorcycle Ministry, which is a... For the Southern California chapter. For the Southern California chapter, yes, because that is a global ministry. Yes. um, International ministry. uh, Motorcycle riders out uh, sharing uh, sharing the gospel. Mm -hmm. And so last week, the Chariots of Lights had a, a, uh, what they called their California tour, which was basically a motorcycle ride from Montebello. Uh, They went to uh, Bakersfield, had an evening service there. Then they went to... um, uh, Delano mm-hmm. had an evening service there, and then they drove to. Um, I'm drawing a total blank. Can't help you. Visalia. There and, you go. And had a, uh, a meeting there, so they had basically four days of riding, and, and each night they had uh, Wednesday night, Thursday night, and Friday night they had uh, church service, mm-hmm. and Sunday morning they had church service at the different service churches that they went, uh, where there are different chapters of Chariots of Light Motorcycle Ministry. Mm-hmm. So we went. Monday night, no, oh, I'm Wednesday sorry, Wednesday night. night. Wednesday night, we went to Montebello. Yes. And uh, attended the, uh, I guess you would call it the kickoff party for that, or kickoff meeting. Mm-hmm. And uh, the founder of Chariots of Light, Dr. Jerry Savell, was there. Yes, he uh, was. Great, great man of God. And um, he's, he gave a great, uh, powerful message that night about flourishing in the gospel. Mm-hmm. And um, I... I don't know, I want to, I'll turn it over to you for a minute and see if there's anything specific you through, wanted to talk about. He went through Psalm 92 about flourishing, that God will help you flourish. And that is his word, that is God's word to Jerry Savell uh, for 2018. That, it, that uh, Psalm 92 will go ahead and have us flourish throughout the year. And I was just, you know, sitting there, you know, totally going, yes, this is a great word. I love it. I receive it. I'll take it. No matter what way I need to have it, you betcha. I'm on it. Because I like it. And it also starts talking about, you know, that, well, hang on. Hey, see, watch this. I have it marked. Ta-da, here we go. Let's see here. It's Psalm 92, verse 12 through 15, I believe. Nope, flip the right page. Yes. And it says, The righteous shall flourish like a palm tree. I love palm trees, so I'm, I'm all over this. And then he shall grow like a cedar of Lebanon. You know, those really big cedar trees. And that uh, those who are planted in the house of the Lord shall flourish in the courts of our God. I'm, I'm liking this because I'm planted. I know I'm planted in the house of the Lord. And then it's uh, verse 14. They shall bear fruit in old age. They shall be fresh and flourishing to declare that the Lord is upright. He is my rock. There is no unrighteousness in him. So I was just going, sweet, I'll take that whole thing. Thank you, Lord. What a nice, uh, it's right there by my favorite passage, which is Psalm 91. Mm -hmm. And I had never really dived into that and got what Dr. Savell was talking about all night. And I do hope that Pastor Carlos has a uh, CD of that because I I really do want it. (laughs) 
But yep. just so many things that was going on with the chariots of light and how the Lord um, was just working that night to where uh, not only was this, and this went on, we, it must have been an hour and a half uh, service with Dr. Savell talking. And if you don't know Dr. Savell, he worked with Ken Copeland Ministries for like almost 50 years. Um, he's been around forever. And he is on Daystar. I believe it's Tuesday. I think it's Tuesdays at 4 o'clock California time. So you know, it's an amazing time to, to just to sit and watch his program. I enjoy it so much that it was a pleasure to uh, meet him again. I had met him before at other conferences. And he was like, okay, you know, put a name and a face together. Smile and nod. Very gracious man. He is a very gracious man. Yes. Yeah. And he went ahead, and I'm going I'm to let Rob describe this because he made me do this next part. Drag me out in the aisle with you. Well, yeah. Go ahead. What, I made you, you do this. You made me do this. Oh. I, I assume you're talking about uh, prayer time. Prayer time. Uh, as, as Dr. Uh, Savell, uh, for those of you who don't know, Dr. Savell um, suffered a very bad stroke just about a year ago. 18 months ago. And um, it's an incredible story that he tells about his recovery from He went in for a, a, just like a little procedure on his neck on the left side. They were going to kind of do that, what I always call it, like a roto-rooter. Right. You know, clear right. the artery out. And he's early 70s. So he thought, okay, no big deal, totally routine, be in and out in a day and a half, no big deal. And I'm buttoning into your story, but he went ahead and the surgeons, excuse me, went in and I guess whenever they did that to remove the plaque, it broke off a piece of it and it went immediately into his brain. Mm -hmm. And that caused a stroke on the right side. Mm -hmm. Where he cut his arm, as he says, just flop. Yeah, you know? so, so all of a sudden now, here's this very active, vibrant man who... Right arm doesn't work. His right leg doesn't work. Can't remember a scripture that he's preached in 50 years. Yep. Uh, can't, remember can't remember the remember names his of wife. his children, his wife, anything. Uh, and uh, he spent, uh, I believe it was a couple of weeks at the mm -hmm. hospital. And they finally, you know, there's se several things that occurred in that time. But he, he finally got to the point of going home. And I find this particularly enjoyable. He, Dr. Savell is, is a man who very much enjoys his motorcycles and his classic cars. Oh, yes. And he has a quite a collection of both at home. And so, you say GTO, baby. Yeah. Woo-hoo. So uh, he, uh, when they went home, he got his, I believe it was his granddaughter, yes. to take him out to his shop, as he calls it. And his wife, Carolyn, refers to it as the museum. But mm -hmm. uh, uh, went out to the shop. And mind you, he's, he's, he's walking shuffle foot and... He's, he's not able to use that right arm, and his, his speech is okay, but not the greatest. And um, He's he, pointing a lot. He's pointing a lot, yeah. So he proceeds to communicate with his granddaughter that he basically wants to start every motorcycle and every automobile in that shop. Now, that's with his right hand, and his right hand's not working. Now, yeah, now... He's got some wait, classic. Hang on. Hey, hang on. The throttle on a motorcycle is on the right side. Yeah. So, you know. So, and, the, and the pedal in the car is on the right side. You know. So he's got some classic, like, 1947 motorcycles, 1954. Some motorcycles that really take some effort to get going. Yes. You know, Kickstart. Much, much more than motorcycles today. And um, he proceeded to start every one of the motorcycles in that shop. Now, mind you, again, this is a man who he couldn't remember his kids' names just moments before, couldn't remember the scriptures he preached. Um, he proceeded to start every motorcycle in that shop and every automobile in that shop. And as he said, the smell was exhilarating, and I can just imagine. <laughs> um, just kind of bask in that whole thing for a little bit, then went through, shut everything down, and as they walked out of the shop... He grabbed the keys for the shop from his granddaughter. From his granddaughter, in the right hand, and he closed and locked the door with his right hand. And as he walked away, he was walking much more upright, w with hardly any shuffle. And uh, his granddaughter was like, "Grandpa, what, what, you're, what's wrong? What, what's going on? You know?" He's like, "What do you mean?" She said, "Well, you just locked the door with your right hand, and you're walking without a shuffle." Mm -hmm. and, and, and everything. Well, obviously, you can you can tell that the Lord had, at that point, touched Brother Savell. Right. 
during his recovery time, be it in the hospital, rehab, or at home, he was listening to uh, the Word of God, different programs, Bible on tape, that guy, Bible on tape, listen to me, Bible on CD. Okay, I'm a Bible on tape girl. Um, you know, but he would be listening all the time. There's praise and worship going all the time. Yeah. There's Bibles going all the time. There's speakers, you know, different speakers in his house on the television going. You know, so there's definitely an atmosphere of uh, the Lord was welcome in it. Mm -hmm. So the healing happened just like that. And it was just like, wow, what, you know. Yeah. He, he was trying to you know, fathom what, you know, what did happen. How did it happen? And he was walking it out, yeah. as I like to say, literally. Out. Yeah, yeah. Uh, so so uh, you can imagine, the, you know, just the shock and the, and the joy as, as he began to regain um, his, his use of his right arm and his right leg. He began to remember. Almost immediately, he began studying to quote scripture again. And uh, make a long story short, in a very, very short period of time, he regained complete recovery. Mm -hmm. uh, no indication of any kind that that man has had a stroke. Right. And now he's riding his motorcycle throughout California. And riding his motorcycle again and back out preaching. You know, I think he said he was gone uh, 20, was it 27 weeks out of the 22 year. 22 weeks out of the year he's gone preaching. Yeah. So, I mean, uh, he, he, he's back on the road and doing everything uh, just as he was before. Complete mm -hmm. recovery. Um, being healed by God, and just it's just an amazing story. And of course, to hear him, I, I don't do the story justice of, of talking about the different motorcycles and the cars and stuff that he he talks about, and just the the glow and the excitement that mm -hmm. he gets talking about them. But uh, it was especially just a, with a room full of bikers, like that <laughs> yeah, knows. Yeah. Now, mind yeah. you, now mind you, we're sitting in a room with probably a couple hundred, a couple hundred people, 150 to 200 people in there. You know, 75% uh, of them are wearing leather vests that say chariots of light on them. Christian biker. Christian Christian motorcycle ministry. Uh, many of them have come from other states to ride with them. Mm -hmm. um, so when they when they left Montebello, there was, there was uh, uh, Carlos says there were probably about 60 of them that left Montebello. I think there was more than that. And then each of the stops that they made, they picked up more and more members. Mm -hmm. So that by the time they ended up in Visalia at the end of the week... There were, you know, probably 250, 300 mm -hmm. uh, mm -hmm. uh, bikes in that ride. And uh, there were some pretty nice ones we, we got to yeah, look no at outside uh, after, the, after the service. But it's um, just a great service. And, and uh, just wanted to uh, I, I give a shout-out to Pastor Carlos and Junior and, and all of Dunamis Power Ministries for uh, being such gracious hosts. Mm -hmm. and, um, saw several friends that we knew and, and uh, hadn't seen for a while. And it's just a it's just a wonderful night. And... Excuse me. Uh, you know, it really reminded me, you know, part of the Great Commission that we have talked about for the last couple of weeks, being willing to be out there and talking to people, you know, great example with the Chariots of Light Motorcycle Ministry, mm -hmm. uh, these guys being willing to be out there. I, I got a hold of uh, Junior last night and asked him if they had any uh, reports yet of how much soul winning that they did. Uh, because that's a big thing for them while they're out on the ride is to win souls for Jesus. And uh, he said they didn't have the official numbers yet, but he and Pastor Carlos together had in excess of 30-plus uh, uh, salvations uh, that they participated in. Mm -hmm. And what I thought was really cool is the night there at, at Dunamis Power Ministries when we were there for the meeting, there was a brand-new member of the organization that was given his patch. They have a great big patch for the back yeah, of Yeah, it's like this it's, big. It's probably 12, 14 inches square, chariots mm -hmm. of light. And so when they when they have a new member, they award them their membership certificate in that patch. And uh, Pastor Eli, I remember, I, I, I would guess he's probably late 30s, early 40s, mm -hmm. somewhere in that range, um, from somewhere here in Southern California. And uh, anyhow, Pastor Eli had uh, uh, over 20 salvations himself mm -hmm. uh, on this ride. Most people don't win 20 souls for Jesus in their entire life. Right. And these guys are doing this in, in the period of just a couple of days. So what a great example of, of living out the Great Commission. Mm -hmm. um, yeah. Well, I got to tell you, a cool part about the evening was that the reason we told you all about Jerry Savelle's healing 
was that he says he has now been called to the Lord to go ahead and do a healing uh, time during his service. And he went ahead and said that the Lord has told him to put the, his right hand on the top of the person's head and to put the receiver, uh, basically like my hand, on his heart because of the heart of the Lord. And basically, that's where Rob got me and said, because uh, Jerry Savelle was basically saying, okay, anybody that has a uncurable disease, problem, something the doctor said they can't help you with, come up and I want to lay hands on you. Rob was going, shoom, you're getting out here, girl. You're going to go ahead and do this. And I'm like, okay, I didn't fight too much, but, you know. I was the first one up there. Yes, you were. There you go. For those of you who don't know from our previous shows, Jody has several... Um, Seven herniated discs. Several issues in her back, <laughs> as, as we will put it, and, and, and refuse to give them names right That's now. That's right. Sorry. Um, but there Oops. are several uh, issues with her back that doctors have said they can't do anything for. So we know we're waiting for a miracle from God uh, to happen. So mm-hmm. we take every opportunity that we can to, to get prayer over her. Mm-hmm. And um, yep, so I, I went up there, and he did. He put his right hand on my forehead. I put my uh, right hand on his uh, heart. heart, and he prayed. And I felt like I got zapped. And everybody said something happened. They could see something happen. And I just felt like you know God zapped me, and literally it felt like there had, had like God had just rubbed Bengay on my back. That's the greatest feeling if you've never experienced that. I've experienced that a few times in my life where I've prayed over someone mm-hmm. and just had that incredible warmth in my hands. Mm-hmm. Uh, and, and, and in several cases, someone's been healed of something. Mm-hmm. Certainly not by my doing, but by just being a, a willing vessel. Uh, and for God I got to tell you, ever since, I felt definitely different. I know something's going on the, yeah. to the good, you know, to, for the good. Something's going on in my back. So I'm like, okay, Lord, let's just keep keep it going. So we continue to believe for that healing, and, and uh, we would ask the, uh, our, our friends out there in Radio Land and Facebook Land to uh, to continue to believe for that. For yes, us. please. Well, and, uh, I take prayer, no problem. Absolutely. So I'm just rejoicing in the Lord on that. Absolutely. So... So, as, as we've been, been talking about the Great Commission, let's review a couple of things we've talked about with the Great Commission, what it is, um, and we can move on from there. So, in Matthew 28, uh, verse 16 and 20, and those of you who listened to the show two weeks ago, uh, you'll, you'll remember this. Then the eleven disciples went away into Galilee, to the mountain which Jesus had appointed for them. When they saw him, they worshipped him, but some doubted. And Jesus came and spoke to them, saying, All authority has been given to me in heaven and on earth. Heaven and on earth. Go, therefore, and make disciples of all the nations, baptizing them in the name of the Father and the Son and of the Holy Spirit, teaching them to observe all things that I have commanded you. And, lo, I am with you always, even to the end of the age. Amen. So, again, Jesus has called us all to go forth and make disciples of all the nations. Mm -hmm. We should be out there winning souls for Jesus. We should be out there sharing the gospel with people. Every day. Yeah. Whatever we're doing in our life. What about Mark? What about Mark? Mark's not here. Um, <laughs> Mark 16. <laughs> Mark 16, verse um, 14 through 18. Later he appeared to the eleven as they sat at the table, and he rebuked their unbelief and hardness of heart because they did not believe those who had seen him after he had risen. And he said to them, Go into all the world and preach the gospel to every creature. He who believes and is baptized will be saved, but he who does not believe will be condemned. And these signs will follow those who believe. In my name they will cast out demons, they will speak with new tongues, they will take up serpents, and if they drink anything deadly... It will by no means hurt them. They will lay hands on the sick, and they will recover. Mm -hmm. I'm sure that all of these things happened (laughs) on the Chariots of Light California tour last week. Uh, What a bunch of of dedicated um, 
faithful believers uh, carrying out that instruction. I gotta say, it happened in the parking lot right after the radio show here last week. <laughs> it did. It did. We saw a young man sitting out one, by one of the light poles. We didn't know who he was or where how he got there. <laughs> I didn't see a car, but you know maybe he was waiting for somebody. But Junior went over to him and started. He, he we actually started walking to the restaurant next door for dinner, and Junior was like, "Hey, wait, just a second, I got something to do." beelined it over to this guy and and then Carlos looked at Rob and said you go <laughs> and Rob went over and I'll let you pick up the story real quick well by, by the time I got over there Junior was already talking to him and uh, basically you know he, he, he basically asked the guy point blank he said how's your relationship with Jesus and I'm sitting there thinking what did you just ask him mm-hmm. he goes how's what's your relationship with Jesus and the guy looked at me and says well I I, I believe in Jesus, but I've kind of been away from him for a long time and, and, and not really following him like I should be. And for Junior, that was just an open invitation. Yeah. Because Junior was like, well, you know what? Right now is a perfect time to rededicate our life to the Lord. Let's do that right now. Reached right out, grabbed the, the young man's hand. And before I even knew what was going on, Junior was saying a prayer, and, and this young man was reciting the prayer right after him mm-hmm. and recommitted his life to Jesus right there. Mm-hmm. Folks, this this just happened in a parking lot, uh, a random place, a random individual being there, mm-hmm. but Junior was obedient to what he he knows he's supposed to do, uh, much more obedient than I I know I am because that's not my nature to walk up to a perfect stranger and say hey how's your relationship with Jesus but uh, that's it's as simple as that it really mm-hmm. is the other question that Junior likes to ask a lot is is um, you know if you were to, if you were to die tonight where would you go. Or rate your rate your relationship with the Lord on a scale of one to five. Yeah, so. one being non non existent and five being great. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. And if you come up with a three, you're rededicating your life yeah. to the Lord right then. Just Pretty bam, making it happen. Pretty much, yeah, yeah. Three or three or lower, he gets a rededication right mm-hmm. there. So easy so we, ways we, to. You know, and, and we've been around for a little while, so you know he's te- they got the young bucks teaching the old ones here what to do. I loved it. <laughs> That's great. It was great. So anyhow, uh, that, that was a, just an experience that we had right here last week and, and just shows you how easy it is to, to take that commission and, uh, and do something with it. So, so I'm going to ask you, honey, what does the, the word that we just had described, we described the incident, but the word is evangelism. Evangelism, yes. What do you have to say about that? Well, the word evangelism means the spreading of the Christian gospel by public preaching or personal witness, which is your personal testimony. Mm-hmm. Your personal witness is your personal testimony. Mm-hmm. What has God done in your life? Right. You know, witnessing to people is not all about knowing the Bible and, and preaching scriptures at people. It's 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 about telling people what has God done for me for you. I always okay. Who likes the song? What have you done for me lately? I don't mm. remember that one. <laughs> okay, you got now change it. What have you done for Jesus lately? There you go. Change the words up. Okay. So anyhow, evangelism we want to talk a little bit more about here today. Um, but uh, right now we need to go to a commercial break. So we're going to go off to a break right now, and when, as soon as we get back, we will continue. Go on. We'll continue. Hi, I'm Rob. And I'm Jody, and we're from Day by Day with Rob and Jody here on Hope Radio 247.com. We would like to invite you to our Wacky Wednesday Mixer, presented by Hope Recovery, Hope Radio 247.com, along with the Corona Chamber of Commerce. An evening everyone can enjoy with candy for the kids of all ages and networking opportunities for the adults. Come be with us on October 25th from 5 to 7 p.m.
Hey everyone, this is Sean Kelly from the Hours of Hope Radio Show, and I'm just here to tell you about something near and dear to my heart, and one of the main reasons why we have Hope Radio 247.com. Hope Recovery Center is a faith-based outpatient recovery center who helps people with any hurt, habit, or addiction. The services we provide here are free of charge and available to anyone. We found the vast majority of people, they don't need a professional psychiatrist. What they really need is someone to listen to them, someone to love them, and to be part of something, a family in particular. For more information, call 951-603-0031. Again, the number is 951-603-0031. Or visit our website at www.hoperecoverycenterinc.org. As I always say, Godspeed, my friends. Thanks for listening to Hope Radio 24-7. We really appreciate you listening. But have you ever missed a show and wondered where you could go listen to it again? All you have to do is access our podcast site. There's a couple different ways to get there. First, you can go to networkcmo.com backslash Hope Radio 247. Or you can actually go to our website at hoperadio247.com and access our podcast page just by pushing the podcast button. Or you can access it through our phone app. You can access through the App Store or Google Play and download it from there. Just type in Hope Radio 247 and download the app that says Pixel Arc. You can download any of our shows and share them with your friends. And once again, thank you for listening to Hope Radio 24-7. Welcome back to Day by Day with Rob and Jody. And we are back talking uh, with you today about the Great Commission and about evangelism, as we just described a moment ago. Can I butt in for a second? Yes. In case anybody wants to call in, now is a good time to pick up the phone and start calling. And we'll take your call here in about 10, 15 minutes, and we'll go ahead and say hey, hi, and do it all live here on the radio. So if you're listening to our live show recorded Mm -hmm. right now, on uh, right now, yeah, that, that's real descriptive, isn't that's it? Right real now, descriptive. There you go. Uh, October twenty third, <laughs> two thousand seventeen. Uh, it's about five thirty three right now. Uh, so if you're listening to that show, you are welcome to call in at seven one two eight three two eight two nine four, and it's going to ask you for an access code. Put in two zero five four nine two. I'll be Vanna White here. There and you go. And it's on the board Woo-hoo. here. Uh, if you're watching Facebook Live, you can see it as well. So. Uh, Getting on, before we get to that, we wanted to share a few more scriptures with you uh, regarding uh, evangelism and and the Great Commission. Mm -hmm. So we're going to talk about Revelation 12, 11. And it says, And they overcame him by the blood of the Lamb and by the word of their testimony. We, we, We bring that up because we talked a few minutes ago about evangelism being the spreading of the Christian gospel by public preaching or personal witness, which is your personal testimony. Mm -hmm. And we are commanded to say so there in Revelation about using the blood of the Lamb, which is Jesus Christ's blood, and using the words of our testimony, our witness, about how what has Jesus done for Jody, what has Jesus done for Rob, what has Jesus done for Sean, you know? What has Jesus done for various people? You can always ask them, what has Jesus done for you? Mm-hmm. And either you're going to get a blank look on somebody's face going, who's Jesus? <laughs> You know, yeah. or you're going to get this whole big dissertation about, you know, he's done blah, 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 and just, you know, fly at you, which is great. That's what we want. Whenever you get out there, you go ahead and say, yeah, Jesus is my Lord and Savior. I can't wait to tell you more about him. And, and, and I would tell people that, you know, if, if you want to get out there and you want to share the gospel with others, which, because we should be, um, Clarify in your mind what your testimony is. Mm -hmm. What has God done for you? Because, you know, everybody wants to go and find the scriptures and do this and do that. That's great, and that'll that'll come in time. There's a place for that. There's a place for that. But the the most uh, impactful way to share the gospel with somebody is to share what Jesus has done in your life. Mm -hmm. And and therefore, building your testimony. Mm -hmm. Prepare your testimony. Um, 
And we would love to hear it. If you guys want to drop us a line, send us an email, that'd be awesome. Absolutely. You can send us an email at info at tcb4jc.org. And if you want, give us permission and we'll read it on the air. Absolutely. Absolutely. Again, that's info at tcb4jc.org. I almost forgot our email address. Oh, no. uh, All right, so if we go on here. This is a, a verse of scripture that everyone should be able to recite. At least the first part. At least the first part of it. John three sixteen through 17. For God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son, that whoever believes in him should not perish but have everlasting life. For God did not send his son into the world to condemn the world, but through, that through the world, that, but that through him, ew, but the world through him might be saved. There we go. I'll get it right yet. You don't have your glasses on, do you? I, I don't. I guess I should put them on, huh? That might be helpful. Hey, I can see the page there now. There you go. You want to try it again? So so let's let's do that second verse again. For God did not send his son into the world to condemn the world, but that the world through him might be saved. There you go. Those two verses of scripture right there ought to get you excited and ought to be a major part of your testimony. Mm-hmm. That God so loved the world that he sent his only begotten son. That whoever believes in him should not have perished, but have everlasting life. What an incredible thing that God loves us so much that he sent his son to die on the cross for our sins and redeem us so that we could return to the Father someday. And the best part, seriously, is that if you, Rob, me, Jody, or you who are listening right now, were the only one in this universe... Jesus would have gone to the cross for you. Uh-huh, uh-huh. He shed his blood for you. Absolutely. And you need to go ahead and realize how much that means to Father God. That Jesus went ahead and obeyed what Father God had said to do mm-hmm. by coming here to the world on earth to go ahead and say, yes, I will do what you're asking me, Father, to go ahead and lay my life down for mankind. hmm and shed my blood so that not only can they be healed because I take 39 stripes for 39 different medical diseases. Go figure that one out. Mm -hmm. That's medically documented in the medical journals that there's 39 different kinds of uh, uh, diseases. So when you think about it, you know, God has this totally laid out Mm -hmm. and that you need to really kind of think about where am I going to spend eternity? Where am I going to go ahead and have eternal life? How am I going to go ahead and live on this planet without Jesus? There's a question for good you. Luck. Yeah, good luck. Good Y'all luck. need good luck, and I don't use that word. I use you know, be blessed. No, I don't use the word luck. No, not at all. All right. So again, that testimony is going to become a major part of your ability. To share the gospel of Jesus Christ. Honey, why don't you read Romans 1? Why don't I read Romans that, that, 1? That's a real stutter for people that wouldn't, doesn't really kind of, that might be going, eh, I don't need Jesus. I don't need to worry about Jesus. Well, Romans 1, verse 16 through 17 says, For I am not ashamed of the gospel of Christ, for it is the power of God to salvation for everyone who believes, for the, for the Jew first and also for the Greek, for in it, The righteousness of God is revealed from faith to faith, as it is written, the just shall live by faith. So basically it's coming down to this. Either you will go ahead and be ashamed of Jesus Christ and turn your back and not have him in your life here on earth, that whenever you get up in heaven one day and you will stand before God and Jesus... It happens to everybody. Mm-hmm. Even if you don't believe in him, the best atheist is going to stand in front of him, I promise. But if you if you do believe, oh, if you don't believe, Jesus is going to say, go away from me, I never knew you, mm-hmm. depart from me into eternal damnation. Basically, you're going to hell. In a handbag. And, yeah, seriously. You are going to go to hell, and that's about it. And there's no turning back once you get up in heaven. You, you don't have another chance to say, but wait, I'll believe now, mm-hmm. now that I've seen it. No, you don't have that, that opportunity then. You have to make that decision while you're here on earth. 
So you need to start thinking about, am I going to be ashamed of Jesus Christ or I will not be ashamed of Jesus Christ? Mm -hmm. As for me and my household, we will serve the Lord. Yes, we will. So, so, you know, so the one thing I want to go ahead and say is think about this decision to go ahead and make Jesus your Lord and Savior today. And this is the decision that you're asking other people to make when you evangelize, uh, when you're out there sharing the gospel, mm -hmm. when you're participating in the Great Commission that we have been instructed mm -hmm. by Jesus Christ to do. Mm -hmm. You know, if, if we're going to lead other people to their salvation, we better make sure that our salvation is good in the meantime. Exactly. So if there's anybody out there that's listening now that maybe you've never never have made Jesus the Lord of your life, or maybe you have, but maybe you've drifted a little, maybe you're not so sure where you stand, mm -hmm. let's, let's take care of that right now. Let's, just, let's, let's, let's do that right now. So just repeat after me uh, if you're out there. And uh, we'll get through this. Uh, we'll just say, Father God. Father God. In the name of Jesus, I come to you. In the name of Jesus, I come to you. And Lord, I ask you for forgiveness of my sins. Lord, I ask you for forgiveness of my sins. Lord, I ask that you would take my life. Lord, I ask you to take my life. Do something with it. Do something with it. Heal the hurts in me. Heal the hurts in me. Help me right the wrongs in my life. Help me right the wrongs in my life. And fill me with the love of Jesus. And fill me with the love of Jesus. Help me as I help others. Help me as I help others. To find the love that there is in you. Help me to find the love that is in with you. And Lord, we just thank you for that in Jesus' name. And Lord, we thank you for that in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. And if you just said that prayer for the first time, welcome to the family of God. And the angels rejoice in heaven when one person is saved. And they're going to rejoice if you've rededicated your life as well. They're really going to party now. Absolutely. Absolutely. So we welcome you back in, in, either into the family of God or back into the family of God, whichever the case may be for you. We're going to take a little bit of a shift here in our show today and talk about a great event coming up here at Hope Radio. Yep. Can't wait. Hope Recovery Center. Mm -hmm. Probably should give a little background to this so that people uh, understand what this is all about. Uh, Hope Radio is an outreach of Hope Recovery Center. And Hope Recovery Center is on the on the internet at www.hoperecoverycenterinc.org. And uh, at that address, you can find out everything you need to know about Hope Recovery. What I can tell you is that Hope Recovery is a faith-based uh, rehab uh, facility for addictions and, and hurts and people that just need help in life. Mm -hmm. uh, totally free. Totally free. Um, and it is made uh, available to you in the form of classes, uh, counselors, um, prayer time, meditation, um, you name it. There's, there's counselors available. There are... Uh, pastors available to you, and uh, my wife is trying to tell me something, yep. but I'm not sure You know sure what I think what, we should do? What should Seriously, we do? What we, rather than us kind of fumbling, <laughs> fiddle do around, we should probably say, hey, Sean, the so, president. So, yes, so we'd like to bring in uh, Sean Kelly, who is the uh, president of Hope Recovery Center, president of Hope Radio 24-7. Uh, he's our extraordinary technician here on our show. Uh, I could go on and on and tell you about all the wonderful attributes of this man, but uh, we'll just suffice it to say that he's a great man of God. We consider him a great friend. Welcome to the show, Sean. Oh, thank you for having me. Yeah. yeah for great. letting me speak. There you go. <laughs> yeah. So would you take a couple minutes in, in your words and talk about Hope Recovery Center and let people understand what it is that you do here at Hope? Yeah, absolutely. You know, it, it's, it started, gosh, probably 10 years ago. Um, and it comes from some of my own personal hurts and, and things that I was going through. I was going through a divorce. This is um, probably like 11, 12 years ago. Going through a divorce, uh, I started drinking again. I started doing drugs. I had three heart attacks. You name it, I just sort of lost everything overnight. And um, when I was trying to really get my life back in order, I started looking into rehabs and, and recovery centers. But I couldn't find any um, that were 
cheap enough, yeah. <laughs> you know, that I could afford. Yeah. That, weren't, that weren't thirty thousand dollars. The, the Betty Ford yeah. Clinic yeah. wasn't an option, huh? Yeah, no, not at all. <laughs> Great facility, but yeah. not, uh, not, 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 not a little pricey. Yeah, exactly. You know, so I always told myself, man, if I ever won the lotto or something, I would love to open up a recovery center or something to that effect to help other people. And so luckily, you know, I accepted Jesus in my life. I fell in love with him, and I just ended up at church every single day. And um, and, and that was great, but not everyone is going to, you know, do that. So, yeah. you know, this this all sort of came about because I wanted to help the other people who were going through hurts, habits, addictions, you know, not be so alone, not be there at their house. They're alone. They have no money. They can't get help. You name it. And so we started out as a very, very small group, and we grew into a day program. So we're open Monday through Friday from 10 to 3. And like you guys were saying, we have, um, you know, pastoral counseling. We have small groups. We have um, devotions. We have Bible study. You know, um, I, I share a lot with people that there's three things that we try to do here. One is listen to you. Two is love you. And three is make you feel part of something and that you know mm -hmm. and that's a family and um you know if we could do those things we're definitely doing what god's called us to do mm -hmm. and and like you're saying you know ab absolutely we do all this for free because the hurt doesn't have any money you right. know and and the bible says you know if we if we could take care of the hurt the widowed the sick you know in return when they get better they could give back and so that's what we're called to do mm -hmm. so that's what we do that's so, so cool. So just for the benefit of our listeners, we're talking about people who have, I mean, obviously the ones that come to mind quickly for me, alcohol addictions, drug abuse, substance abuse. What other types of, of scenarios do you, you deal with? Gosh, depression, suicide, um, single moms, single dads, you know, just trying to get through life. We had a person that um, was injured at our church. And he went from working full time, you know, for 20, 30 years to not being able to work mm -hmm. and went through this depression. And I'm like, well, why don't you come to Hope? You know, he's like, well, I'm not an addict. I'm like, you don't need to be. <laughs> you know, come help me. Come volunteer. Come right. run classes. You know, all sorts of different things. And, you know, I, I really feel like if it if Hope wasn't here, I don't know what what would have gone on with him mm -hmm. you know he would have went crazy at home for two years that, that's interesting because we don't think about um, drastic change in your life yeah. happening and what do you do now mm -hmm. you, you you've been you've spent all your time all your life working towards something and all of a sudden boom there's a major uh -huh. roadblock that's coming out just yank the carpet yep. out from under you yeah i've yeah. been there yeah, yeah me so too. <laughs> that's great, and 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 so we provide that service to to these people, and uh, uh, been doing that for about eight years now. Yeah, yeah about yeah. eight years. Going now. on eight years here in this building. Okay. And you know, Hope Recovery has been around probably for a little over eight years okay. before we got our building. So. Okay. So and now we have a one year anniversary of the radio show, so, or excuse me, the radio station. Yeah. yeah. So about a year ago. You felt the call to to, uh, to start the radio station. So. <laughs> you know, it was it was actually a couple years prior to that. I was asked to be on a radio station for an interview, and I went in and was nervous as all get out and hated it. And <laughs> you know, the owner of the station, he's like, "Hey, what about having your own radio station? You know, your own radio show?" And I'm like, "I don't think so. I do not want to do that." Well, there's a saying I, I have that I've been doing all throughout my Christianity, and that's do something scary every day. Mm -hmm. you know, do something I, scary every day. Yeah, yeah. I yeah. was doing things so wrong for so long. I'm like, you know, I need to do the complete opposite of what I was doing. And um, Even Joyce Meyer says that, do it afraid. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. And so I did it afraid, and I ended up doing over 60 um, radio shows over there. But I was getting tired, and um, and it was just time to step away. But when I did step away, I kept on thinking about it, kept on thinking about it, and looking into it more and more and more. I don't know. I you know I know God's placed it in my heart. He's like, why don't you just start your own? And so I had a lot of reading, a lot of research, a lot of talking to people. Yeah. We started our own, you know radio station, and it's been been such a blessing. Mm -hmm. yeah, so. 
Uh, you had people that were, were coming to Hope at the time, um, seeking help from you that actually came in and helped build the little studio in here. Yeah. Uh, yeah. So we had a nice little studio in here and uh, very, uh, very well equipped to do what we need to do mm -hmm. and mm -hmm. uh, has progressed as we've gone along. Uh, over this last year, and like we said, we're just celebrating one year. One year, October anniversary. 15th was our one year um, anniversary. Jody and I have been on, uh, our show has been on here about six months now. So Since April. Wow. I, I know we were, when you started, you just had your show. Yeah, we were just sort of, well, October 15th, I think we had like a couple shows. Okay. But okay. when we started, we started a couple months prior to that, and it was just my old show when we were just doing all the reruns. Oh. Okay. And we started, people started tuning in and listening. And I'm like, okay. Okay, okay. It's sort of weird. So then we started adding shows, and, and we are where we are today yeah. with uh, a, a, a respectable um, amount of shows. Amount of shows, but a, 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 an interesting variety of shows, too. Yeah. yeah. You know, yeah. they're not all Bible based shows, they're not all non Bible based shows. They're, there's quite a variety. Um, but uh, so we have a great event coming up. Uh, later this week, uh, we're approaching Halloween time, and uh, you know, as as Christians, we tend to say, "Ooh, we don't celebrate Halloween. We we do trunk or treats, <laughs> harvest yeah. festivals, harvest festivals." I don't know where trunk or treat came. Well, I know it from trunks of cars trunks and parking of cars. Lots, but um, so we have a trunk or treat. But uh, we, it, it goes beyond that. We have on Wednesday, we have what is being called a Wacky Wednesday Mixer. Now, it's Wednesday the 25th from 5 to 7. Two days from today. Two days from today. And this is an event put on in conjunction with the Corona Chamber of Commerce. Yes. Uh, so this is a mixer that they do regularly. But we've kind of expanded it to include families throwing in a trunk or treat, um, which I thought was just a really cool idea yeah. um, to, to do so. Um, so some, some of what's going to be happening at that is that there will be uh, local businesses, for those of you who are in the Corona, California area, there will be local businesses here. They'll have tables out promoting their businesses. Uh, the different radio shows that are on the station will have uh, displays out promoting their programs and letting you know what they do. Well, hang on. Who are we going to have? We're going to have, let's see, Tamara Doss and her show, God's Amazing Plans. She's going to be here with her husband, Reggie. Doss, Reggie Doss from, from the Los Angeles, former Los Angeles Rams. Yeah, from Los Angeles he's got a couple Rams. of his buddies coming. And they're doing the Rams are doing great. They're five and two this year. So yeah. I find out on Jeremy's show. Oh, hey, God, I love sports. God, yes. I love sports. Hey, Jeremy, you are. We wait. We listen to it today. And then you got Eddie Foy. Eddie Foy. For those of you who don't know Eddie Foy, um, many years ago Eddie when I was Foy. a child, Bob Hope did a show called Eddie Foy and the Seven Little Foys. And that was the story of Eddie's family. His, mm -hmm. his dad was a, a uh, Broadway actor and his grandfather. Bob uh, Bill actor, yeah. And uh, Eddie was, is one of the seven little, little boys. boys. He's Eddie Foy III. Mm -hmm. And so he does a show where he talks about Broadway musicals. And he's been a casting director for uh, many years. Many of the, the shows that you know from the 70s and 80s, he was the casting director. Uh, as well as for the Jerry Lewis Telethon every year, he was a casting director for I believe forty-two years, if I remember something correctly. like that. And then, you got, then there's one here which we got to say something about. Okay. And that is the Corona Chamber Hour with Bobby Spiegel. Corona Chamber of Commerce, by our buddy Bobby Spiegel. Um, uh, I, I'm, I'm, I'm trying to be good and say something good. Um, we love you, Bobby. We and love Karen. you, Bobby. <laughs> <laughs> no, Bobby. Bobby. Without Spiegel. Bob, without Bobby and Karen around town, and, and Buddy Suter, we would not be together. That's right. There that's you a, go. That's a whole other story. Um, we'll have Buddy. We'll have Buddy. I'd love to. Oh, that's we'll not going to happen. Buddy's in heaven. Sorry. We'll have Bobby in one time here on the show, and he can explain everything. Um, absolutely. So. And in addition to Bobby's show, we have uh, Kimberly Davidson from the City of Corona in the mm -hmm. Economic Development Department. Uh, but I understand Bobby and Ke uh, Bobby and Kelly, Bobby and Kim, will both be out of town this week, so they won't be here. Right, uh, they're in there. Washington D.C. That's correct. And did we get all the shows? So we also nope. have we have uh, the Hours of Hope Radio Show with Sean Kelly, <laughs> Mr. Sean Kelly. Uh, hey, on Tuesday. Is that so? On Sean? Tuesday. Tuesday. One. Tuesday, always a great show. Um, we have um, uh, Epic Thoughts with, I always say this, is it Roman? Yeah, it hey. took me over a year to say it like that. Yeah, um, <laughs> Roman is a pastor out of San Bernardino, and, and he's got a... 
awesome show. If awesome you like show. Christian it's, rap, go for it. Yeah, yeah. He's the godfather of Christian rap. Is that what you yeah. call him? Yeah. Great guy. Great guy. And uh, so let me see what else we got there. We got Revive with Julie Pearson, mm-hmm. um, the Gap Gals Ministry. And uh, I think. What about Brenda? Does it Brenda? Brenda, 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 Brenda. Gleason, yes. She has. Um, Health. Oh my, it's. Um, Fitbits. Yeah, health. Yeah. Uh, Fitbit. No, health. Healthy Fitbit. Healthy Fitbit. Okay. We, we we just started it last week, so <laughs> I I'm, I apologize for that. Sorry, Brenda. It's a five minute <laughs> Fitbits, and they're awesome, awesome tips on how to get healthy, and you know, and um, you know, just how to maintain that healthiness. Mm-hmm. And then we also have Healthy Soul Radio, which is Monday mornings from nine to ten. And that's what Tracy Scars. Brand new show just started a couple weeks great. ago. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And then, um, then Richard and Andrew, he will have a show starting here in January. Yep. Richard Andrew, good friend of ours. Hello there, Richard. If you're out there listening today, he'll he'll be starting a great show. I, I can't wait to hear what he's going to bring to the studio. Yeah. It's going to be an awesome, awesome yeah, thing. Absolutely. He's the worship leader for NASCAR. Uh, one of the worship leaders. One of for NASCAR. yes. Yeah. Yeah, and then we also have. It's going to be. You know, um, she switched the name, but it was going to be Lighthouse Financial um, Hour, mm-hmm. and it's um, it's a friend of mine, and it's her and her brother, and they're going to be giving sort of legal advice or financial advice, um, mm-hmm. okay. helping people out, just what to do with their money, what not to do with their money, you know, stuff but like that. Boy, do we need that in the world the no way it kidding. is today? Yeah, you know, and they're you know they're a Christian business and just amazing people. I they mean, you always wanna... get people going buy gold, buy silver, yeah. buy this, buy yeah. that. I, I don't know what to buy anymore yeah. or not um, buy. We also have a we have a new show for couples too, marriage. Yeah, actions couples take, yeah. and that's on Thursdays from Thursdays. noon to one. Yeah. Mm-hmm. So wow, yeah. we do have a lot. We, we yeah, got a lot going on, and uh, I got to make sure we finish up the, what we need to talk about here because we're like three quickly minutes. running out of time. But uh, <laughs> um, the Wacky Wednesday Mixer, October 25th, 5 o'clock to 7 o'clock, there'll be networking opportunities, meet the personalities, tour the radio station, uh, talk to people about Hope Recovery. Uh, there'll be food and drinks, there'll be raffle prizes, and of course, candy for the kids. We encourage them to wear their costumes and come out and have a fun night with it. Big kids get candy, too. Big kids get candy, too. Okay. And we have a ribbon cutting at 530 with the uh, uh, Chamber of Commerce, so that'll be exciting for that. I hope Mr. Jim Dorsey's doing the photography. We got some some live music going on that night. So just a a whole bunch of fun stuff going on for a nice evening here uh, in in the middle of the week to to celebrate the upcoming Fall Harvest Festival (laughs) trunk retreat, not a Halloween night thing event right <laughs> so that's our wacky Scare wednesday crows. mixer Woo-hoo. and uh just wanted to say thanks to sean for uh for being on and and and, and uh we'll have, do you uh, have you on more often yeah, always anytime. Uh, i'm always there that's being right a part of uh, what we're doing so as we wrap it up today we want to thank you for uh, listening to uh, day by day with rob and jody we want to leave you a quick blessing may the lord bless you and keep you may the lord make his face to shine upon you and be gracious to you May the Lord lift up his countenance upon you and give you peace. And all God's people said, Amen. Amen. Check us out on Facebook at Day by Day with Rob and Jody. Leave us some feedback or check out our website at www.tcbforjc.org. If you'd like uh, notes from our show, please email us at info at tcbforjc.org. Please indicate the topic of the show and we'll send that out to you. If you'd like to support this ministry financially, please send your tax-deductible donations to Rob Judkins Ministries, P.O. Box 1415, Corona, California, 92878. We look forward to seeing you Wednesday night. I know Jody looks forward to seeing you. I will be here. As I do, and uh, we look forward to seeing you again next week. So until next week, I'm Rob. And I'm Jody. And join us as we continue to find hope in Jesus Christ on Day by Day with Rob and Jody. Thank you.